How many of you had some, went through some things that you just did not understand at all? Spent a few years being totally confused and miserable and almost lost your faith a number of times and now you look back and you, you, you know now why that had to happen. Isn't it fun? I'll give you an example. When I was still doing my little home Bible study, because of having a full-time job, I didn't really have time to study properly and get any sleep. And, um, you know, I was raising kids. I had kids. I had a full-time job. And so I started feeling like God wanted me to quit my job. But the problem was, if I quit my job, we were going to be short $40 every month of having enough money to pay our bills. And that was, and then that was not even having, that was not even looking at anything for clothes or car repairs or home repairs or anything like that. That was just to pay the bills. And, uh, but I just kept feeling like that's what God wanted me to do. Well, I partially obeyed God and that never works. You say, what did you do? I got a part-time job. <laughs> Come on, anybody know what I'm talking about? Well, God, I want to obey you, but I'm going to have a little backup plan here just in case. <laughs> just in case you don't come through, I'm going to have a little backup plan. Well, you know what? You're not going to get your breakthrough until you get rid of your backup plan. Oh, you didn't like that. I'll tell them. <laughs> come on. You're not, you're not going to get what you want until you get rid of your backup plan. Yeah, I'll preach to you more if you act better. <laughs> Just think about that. And so I finally, I got fired from my part-time job, which <laughs> I knew immediately was God because I was, I'd never been fired from a job. I wasn't the kind of person that got fired from a job. But I mean, from the time I went to work at that place, I couldn't do anything right. I mean, it was ridiculous, the mistakes that I made. I would have fired me. <laughs> and so I quit my job, and I was so scared. Oh, my gosh, I was scared. And for six years, every month, supernaturally, some way, God provided that money that we needed to pay our bills. And I can tell you, I look back now, and those were some of the most precious years in my life and such bonding times with God when I would see the little things that he did for me that I knew was him. Couldn't have possibly been anybody else. But you know, I was really, really, really getting tired of living like that. When, God, when? I made this big sacrifice. When are you going to come through with some prosperity for us? We're tithing, we're giving, I'm preaching, I'm teaching. You know, we love to give God a list of all of our good qualities. Like, <laughs> you, you owe me something. Look at all the good stuff I'm doing here, God, and you're not doing anything. <laughs> and um, so... My pastor came by, wanted to share a good report. He had a speaking engagement, which I was just desperate to have anybody ask me to come and speak anywhere. They never did. And uh, <laughs> he came by, and he'd gotten this big offering, and two or three people said they wanted to partner with him, and he was all excited, and he told me his good news, and I did what we do. Oh, praise the Lord. That's all. Thank you, Jesus. And, uh, <laughs> come on. And, uh, well, at least I was trying to act like I knew I was supposed to act. And, uh, then all of a sudden it was like he, he said, oh, is it okay that I'm telling you this? I don't, and I'm like, no, I wish you'd shut up, but I didn't tell him. 
How many of you, when you're just, you feel like you're hurting so bad, you feel like your guts are gonna fall apart, you don't appreciate hearing somebody else's great testimony? <laughs> Come on, be honest. So e even with giving your testimony, there's a time. <laughs> I mean, you know, if somebody looks like they're about to fall over dead with the flu, that's not when you should tell them that you started to get it last week and God healed you. <laughs> that's the time to have a little bit of compassion. <laughs> Amen. And so I pretended like I was real happy for him. And when he left, I went and threw myself across my daughter's bed and I cried and cried and cried and cried and cried and when I got up from that bed I said Jesus I don't care if I ever see one result I will continue to tithe and give offerings until the day you come back to get me and our finances changed from that day let me go back to what I said earlier we got to stop serving God just to get a result do you hear me? We know there are promises. It's fine to believe for those promises, but how we behave in our relationship with God cannot be based on whether he's giving me what I want or not. He's already, <clears throat> already given us more than anybody could possibly ever deserve <clears throat> in a million lifetimes. Well, I didn't understand why we were going through that. It didn't make any sense. We had sacrificed, we were trying to do what was right. Well, I know now, I fully understand it because then we needed $40 a month. <laughs> you would fall right out of your chair if I told you how much it costs to run this ministry now every month. And you know what? I never think about it. God brings the money in. We don't charge for our conferences. Our ministry has no debt at all, none. <clears throat> we've never paid one cent in interest because we've never borrowed money. And it used to be $40 a month but see, that's where I learned how to trust God. You gotta learn how to trust God for your socks and underwear before you can trust him for a worldwide ministry. Come on. And I still have a notebook at home where I wrote my little prayer list to God back in the 70s. Dear God, I need 12 new washcloths and I need a new skillet. And I'll never forget the day that somebody knocked on my door and I answered the door and didn't recognize the person. She said, I hope that you do not think that I am stark, raving, mad, but I felt like God told me to bring you 12 new washcloths. <laughs> I'm, that's the kind of stuff that knits you to God. I mean, because I knew that that had to be God. And see, saying we trust God is one thing, but when we really trust God, we enter his rest. Yes. Yes. Trying to trust God is frustrating, but when you really trust him, you really don't worry about the situation because you know that God will take care of it. You don't know when, you're not trying to figure out when, you don't know how, you're not trying to figure out how, you're just, you know God will do it. And if God doesn't do it, then maybe it's not supposed to be done. We hope you enjoyed this teaching. To get more from Joyce, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing.